what's up everybody welcome back to the channel um, you have seen on prior videos our Woodmiser LT10 sawmill that I built a trailer for so it will be portable and um, it used to have a Briggs and Stratton 10 horsepower engine on it um, I've already taken that off the first uh, part of this process has been very time consuming and a little bit aggravating uh, and required a lot of thinking so I wasn't really in a videoing mood but um, the the Briggs was starting to get some trouble put a new carburetor on it cleaned it and cleaned it it just wasn't quite running right it's got a ton of hours on it wasn't using oil but it's always been just lacking for power a little bit so I've been toying with the idea for a long time of putting a Predator on here. I'm a big fan of Predator engines. I've got Predator pumps, Predator pressure washers, Predator air compressors. I just like Predator. They've been a really good engine for us. Um, so I finally bit the bullet, went and bought a 13 horsepower Predator. And um, I thought it was going to be fairly easy to put it, put it on here, but it's turned into more of a job than what I thought expected the original motor sat on a little plate here that slid back and forth and that's how the belt tightened so that was uh, kind of a rink-a-dink design to start with but um, the new motor is going to be mounted solid as you can see right now the engine plate is just tacked on here and I've got the engine mocked up for the time being and there was a hole here already where a brake went for the blade so I took that brake out and I put in this new shaft cut these little ears put an idler on it Put some tabs back here took the original engine handle or uh, belt tensioning handle that used to tension the uh, used to slide the engine back and forth and uh, modified it i've got a little piece of 5 16 rod that goes to the original turnbuckle the shaft that goes through here is actually a uh a three-quarter shaft this is a good tight fit and that's a good thing i'm not going to take it off because i don't need to but um turned it down to a half inch so there's an eighth of an inch lip behind here drilled and tapped it and milled a flat off and then this uh part here i had cut with a flat on it so that it um can't twist so this rod is adjustable length and this tightens the belt so it can be adjusted for more tension and I think I may have to go to a slightly shorter belt but I need to finish bolting the engine down to test that theory so that was step one is getting the engine on I'm not really sure why I decided to tackle all this at one time. I should have just put the engine on, got it working, and used the sawmill for a little bit with the larger engine. But um, I'm a slow learner, and I like to bite off more than I can chew. So I decided to add power feed and power head up and down all at one time, at the same time as that was replacing the engine so right here is the beginnings of the power feed this is a uh, $47 on sale Harbor Freight winch and it's got a plate holding it to the um, side rails of the carriage and uh, I took the pulley off the winch and had a friend of mine to turn the pulley down and basically we just turned the ear off of the cable drum on this side and turned it down to where this sprocket would fit on the shaft so now we have a shaft instead of a drum and then 
got these idlers and they bolt on the same holes that the, the winch mounts on. In the back, I've got a piece of all thread with a small piece of square stock wood to it with two nuts. This is gonna tighten my chain and I'll show you how this chain is gonna go on here. So the reason I decided against milling a keyway in this aluminum spool is because it was gonna make it really thin if I did that. Um, you see right here on the end where they got it drilled through for the cable to attach. That was the original idea. It's thick here and then it gets thin out here where the um, sprocket's gonna go. So what we're gonna do, we got, this is uh, not your traditional set screw sprocket. This is a uh, sprocket that's made to clamp on the shaft. It's actually got a keyway in it still, but it's made to clamp down on the shaft. So we are going to put some red Loctite on this aluminum shaft and Loctite this collar and sprocket to it. And I don't think there's going to be a tremendous amount of force on this. I mean, it's, this is all this is doing is pulling the log or pulling the carriage through the log um so i mean it's meant to be pushed this sawmill was originally so there's not going to be a tremendous amount of force on this if it does break loose the loctite i've got a second plan but um i just thought i would start with the simplest version first so this is what we're going to try to start with all right so that is loctited on that compression fitting is squeezed in as tight as a 1 8 allen wrench would stand and i'm feeling really good about it i don't think that is going to go anywhere um, so now just to put the uh, winch back together this has a roll pin that goes right here and it's spring loaded and you see it's splined here and the winch motor splined here so you can pull out on this and twist it and it free spools this, which is gonna work really nice. If I ever have any electrical problems or anything, I can always put the winch in free spool and just push the sawmill by hand like I used to. So if you're like me and you don't have a chain breaker, one thing you can do, the thing that I've always done, is take your grinder and you grind off the swedged ends on these pins and a drift punch or a nail or whatever you've got will drive that link out. All right, there she is. And you see I got some sag in my chain but i've also got four inches that i can take out of my threaded rod right here all right i don't want to get too carried away tightening this chain i've looked at the uh the Wood Miser LT70s and the LT40s and so forth, they all use this same type of drive system, similar, and uh, they all have sag in their chain. And um, everything's just tacked right now, so I don't want to break anything loose while I'm testing this. It'll run at least in freewheel. So that's good. Day two here. Pulley came in for the alternator. And the with two winches, one running the head up and down and one running the carriage back and forth, we're gonna be pulling pretty hard on the battery. This is an electric start engine. Uh, it's got a piece of foam over it right now, but that's going to be pretty nice. The stator that's in here is very small. They say it doesn't hardly put off any amperage. It just will kind of maintain a battery if you're running the motor for a long time. Uh, they make an additional stator. It's basically, it's got one little short magnet behind the flywheel. 
they make a kit where you can put the, the, the entire stator where the magnet runs all the way around the flywheel here. But I decided in instead of tearing my brand new engine apart and putting uh, that stator in it that may or may not produce enough power, um, I got on Amazon and bought me a $10 pulley and it is going to sit on this shaft right here and I'm going to come off of these bolt holes on the back of the engine over and make a mount for a one wire alternator that we're going to set right here. Um, I looked at the parts house this afternoon and the one they had was a full size GM one wire alternator. It was going to be really big and they were really proud of it. Um, so I got to looking online and I found one for about $20 less and it's a mini. So it'll be much smaller sitting here. So I've got that to do yet. And also this is a plate that I've cut. And after I take this cable assembly with these, all these snatch blocks off the other 2,000 pound winch like the one that's moving the carriage is going to be mounted. This plate sits right on that piece of 2x4 tubing and the winch will mount there and I figured it to where the um, cables would be would line right up with the drum. So I'm going to have both of these cables running on the drum and it will raise the head up and down. But right now before I go any further with anything else, I've only got just a little bit of time this afternoon. I'm gonna pull the motor off, get it out of the way so that I can set a battery right here on the carriage. And we're gonna test this winch, run it back and forth, just to make sure that everything's jiving under power before I wet anything solid. So, this pulley will set back here behind the other pulley and it clears the blade guard on the saw so that the alternator can sit back here behind the blade guard. I think it's going to work out really nice. Yes, that is the way they recommend you connect it to the battery. It's right there in the uh, manual that came with the winch. Okay, this is a temporary setup. This I'm not even going to use this little handle. I just want to test and make sure this winch, everything's going to jive before I weld everything up solid to know if I need to change this gear. So this is the moment of truth. Let's see if this thing will work. Well, the motor runs. I'm going to have to engage the winch. Now it's latched in. That's pretty cool. She's a little bit slow. That's about the right speed for sawing. I need to check the voltage on this battery and make sure that this battery is not half dead. That would make a big difference. Um, but may have to look at a large, making a larger sprocket or getting a larger sprocket to go on this shaft of the winch. Um, Cause that's gonna be a pretty slow speed to reverse it. So this is going to be my control box. It's a waterproof plastic uh, enclosure I bought off of Amazon. And all of my electronics are gonna sit in here to hopefully keep them dry. I have got two of these pulse width modulators. It's a speed control device. It comes with a forward and reverse switch, speed 
little speed rheostat and a uh, digital gauge that'll show you one through 100 percent of how fast your motor's running so if i figure out that i I, if I get this mounted up on my box where I can see it and I know that I like to saw at 75% I can just crank it all it, crank it to 75 without having to think about whether the saw is traveling at the right speed so that's going to be pretty nice and I've got momentary switches for set works that I'm building for the head height control and I'll, I'll explain more about that as we go on just wanted to give you all a little idea of everything I've got planned. Uh, get all this worked out, it's going to be pretty slick. You'll be able to bump a button and move the saw head exactly one inch or three quarters or two inches based on the position of my switches. So I'm pretty excited on how this thing's coming together. Um, everything has worked so far. It's been slow go, a lot of engineering on the fly. S stick around and We'll get this thing going pretty soon. Let's see what we've got here. Twelve point six. So the battery's charged. That is as fast as she's gonna move. 